Hello guys, right then, on the back of uh, the crazy amount of views that I seem to get off that Morant's 2A draw deck, I have got a Nakamichi DR3, which is actually from the, I would say the pinnacle kind of time of Nakamichi, this is a, the late 80s, early 90s I think it is, this stuff is the highest possible quality you could pull out of a cassette deck. This is a DR3, which is a two head deck, however, just because it's a two head deck, the frequency response on these and the level of build is unbelievable. This is a particularly clean example. This is a DR3, as I said, and it's coming. I'm not sure where this came from. I've had it for a while now. I can't actually remember where I got it from, but it has issues, let's say. So let's give it a test and see what issues it has. So looking along the front end, pretty straightforward two-head cassette deck, as I said. The features we have on this one, we've got our usual tape selector, which quite nicely says tape 1, 2 and 4, rather than CX, ZX and whatever it usually says. We've got Dolby B and C. We've got a nice bias tuning knob there, which is always pleasant to have on any deck. We've got full logic control for the play and rewind and stop, etc. And we have recording level knobs there for the balance and the master output, as Nakamichi's always do. This has a particularly funky orange dial and gauge, which I like, other than the newer ones sometimes have green. I like this kind of orange 80s kind of vibe. So let's play a tape and see what happens. Today's test tape is Salt and Pepper and their uh, greatest hits, I believe it is. Alright, so when we input the tape there, it should kind of rewind it back a little bit. It kind of did and didn't. So let's play this and see what happens. So I've pressed play there and it actually seems to be doing nothing. And yet, the timer is going crazy and it thinks it's playing. So I'll stop that. Let's try fast forward and rewind. Nothing on fast forward. Rewind doesn't do anything whatsoever, it just stops. And I'll try to play one more time. It seems like it's engaging the heads, but oddly it's just going a bit crazy. So let's pop the, uh, the door cover off. This is really heavy. These, they, As I said, the quality of these is lovely. This is a solid bit of metal. Some nice copper pads on the bottom there, which is pretty cool. So let's see if we can see a bit better what's going on with this door. I'm going to try pressing play. Heads engaging. Weirdly, the right hand reel is turning. So when I press play, the right hand reel is turning like it's fast forwarding, but it should be playing. And I suspect that's not doing much good to my tape. This is unusual. Let me just check this tape. Hasn't yeah the door's a little bit slow as well. Oh well that's interesting. My test tape has snapped. So maybe maybe we're alright. Maybe the tape's knackered. Chaz and Dave never lets me down. So let's try this again. Right. Let's try play. We seem to be playing, which is good. Rewind and fast forward. That all seems to be working. So this deck came with this tape in it. So is this the reason why somebody sold it and they didn't realize it was snapped? The same as I didn't realize it was snapped, to be honest with you. I'm not a massive salt and pepper fan. I don't have the case, but with good old Chaz and Dave, this seems to be producing an output but here's what we'll do we'll strip it down change the belts give everything a good clean out and a service get it calibrated and see where we go from there along with the fuses in a plug checking your test tape is maybe a lesson to be learned guys so this is fit for the bin so looking inside then we have a slightly shiny but clean pinch roller which looks original and we have a dusty set of heads but everything seems to be in order, aside from the dust. 
We've got a pretty standard Sankyo transport here, which is in most of these two and three head Nakamichi decks from the era. These have their own issues, I suppose. But let's take the top off and see what we've got inside. So what I like about these decks is the fact that they actually have three screws on the side. It's not often you get a deck with three screws on the side. And to me, that denotes a little bit of quality. So let's uh, pop this top off. Wow, that is clean. That is immaculate. Absolutely immaculate. Uh, pretty straightforward. Sankyo Transport there. Nakamichi Motor. The, some of them actually have Sankyo written on the real motor there. This is the later model as well, so it doesn't have the idler tyre controlling your fast forward and rewind, which means it's got the cog, which is a hell of a lot better because you don't have to mess about with changing the idler tyre or it doesn't lose its friction. You have plastic on plastic. Nice little features like these little copper uh, tabs there for the earths. You've got one hell of a power button extension there. But as I say, this thing looks... Immaculate. I would suggest that someone's redone all of our cable ties. So possibly someone's been in here before. All our transistors on a nice cooling rack there and all the caps look fine. Visually the deck look absolutely perfect. And as you can just see from the test that we did a minute ago, it seems to be kind of playing something. So what I am going to do is I do have a belt which is from Web Spare Parts. I'm not affiliated with these guys whatsoever, but generally for the Nakamichi stuff, these are probably about the best I can find that you're not spending 50 quid on a belt for. A lot of the American guys like to shell out on their belts, but honestly, unless you've got a dragon or something, you're not going to notice the difference. You're just going to feel a bit better. Maybe. You know, I don't think I'd feel better paying 50 quid for a belt, but that's just me. So let's get the transport out and have a look in the back of it. So we've got our... Power feed cable there for the transport first. The blue and black one, the little one, is the light for our the uh, behind the tape on the front panel of the transport there. And what else we got? And the smaller one there is also for power. And then we have the grey one, which someone has nicely fed through the capacitors of the deck, is your audio feed from your head and the smaller grey one which is just down here is your power supply to your erase head all really easy to identify which is going where because all the plugs are different and all pretty straightforward to stick back in uh, it seems that there's a screw missing off the top of the transport there which is the top retaining screw that's fine we can find another retaining screw for that so the other two are underneath and then once you've got these two out from underneath the transport is removed that way and as paul daniel says just like that those two screws from underneath are out and although these are kind of tight it should really now pull with no real issue um he says just careful wiggling and the transport should come out in one unit just be careful of what's what it's wrapped around because there are significant wires for the unit that aren't transport related there we go one thank you transport let's have a look at the transport then i hope my lighting's all right because i've got a light behind the camera i might just ease that off a little bit there we go so thank you transports in all sorts of stuff from the time period these are mostly metal relatively high quality especially at the time but actually really simplistic we have a main capstan motor here which as you can see is the belts in place but it is um it seems like it's got a bit of mold on it this is the real motor and then you also have this kind of mod select motor down the bottom which has some leaf springs down in there and that indicates to the deck what mod it's in is it in play is it rewind fast forward etc so what do we need to do with this so first of all we need to get this belt off which is a case of removing this panel and that all just pops off to remove the to, to replace the belt common faults and problems on these transports it's well documented this real motor here if not used very often can develop uh, dead spots which will cause the decks to stop randomly not play and well that's it really not much of a solution to this other than replacing them you can replace them directly with a mabuchi one which is like a japanese 
uh, or Chinese uh, cheap old version but it's a direct replacement they're about seven quid if you're going for originality and quality and all the rest of the stuff people like to try and split these down and clean them out I personally can't be bothered for the sake of having a brand new motor it is hugely essential that those leaf switches down there are cleaned out because that can cause play battery wire fast forward problems if they're not cleaned out properly it can't detect what mode it's in and it'll just rewind randomly or pause or the head uh, head raft will flap up and down a couple of times and it gets a bit silly but honestly looking at this now it's pretty clean anyway the uh, the head and everything looks fine the pinch roll looks fine but we'll look at that closer later i prefer to leave the pinch rollers on nakamichi gear rather than replace it with a cheap plasticky one because honestly they're usually pretty good but everything seems nice and smooth basically that's it so we'll go from there In fact, you know what? I was going to do this in fast forward, but I won't because actually, if you're looking to do these jobs on the same deck, me stripping this down in fast forward isn't going to help anybody, is it? So you can obviously skip this bit unless you're doing this Senko transport yourself. But I'll take you through the little journey. Um, it is possible to do this without removing these cable ties, but in all honesty, you're just making your life worse. So we'll clip and replace all three of these. You just got to be very careful you don't end up nipping the wires. That's the only thing. One, two, three. In my experience with these, a lot of issues is caused through when you're servicing it, catching the wires on the motor as well. Some of these wires can be a bit thin and a little bit rubbish. So just be a bit wary of that when you're working on these transports just do a little bit of wire threading now it should give us more access to the mortar plate which is we're trying to remove we're trying to remove this plate here so we've got another screw there I'm not sure this has been serviced the way that these screws are kind of um, clicking you know that they've never been removed or retalked or anything so once this motor plate is free to maneuver then just watch your real motor wires up here and uh, just find the magic way of doing it really here we go kind of rotates around that way and then it'll allow you to get to your capstan and your belt let's have a look at this belt because it's a bit a bit mouldy uh, it's not bad it's not amazing but very shiny on the inside clearly had some miles but we'll replace that so next thing to do is to pull this capstan and once that's out make sure you take a note of which way this brass bush goes if I can get the camera to focus it goes pointing upwards almost with the arms on the side and once you pull that out you should notice underneath that you have your capstan retaining washer cast those to one side and sometimes there's a, a washer on there as well but on this one nothing but dirt to be honest with you so that is capstan out of the way and very gently what I'm going to do next is remove this face plate which means we have to eject the mechanism so just press this back and let the mechanism come out and then it's these two screws we might have to uh, clean out the soft close mechanism on the door which is again pretty straightforward they're just full of grease and that grease becomes a bit hard this plate then comes away and as I said that is your blue and black wire just be careful to get it around the back of that leaf um, switch, not spring. And then, as I said to you, this is the newer transport. So in the middle there, you've got a, a cog instead of a wheel with a tire on it, idler tire. This is absolutely immaculate, this transport. I don't know where it's been um, in, a, in an air-cooled bag, I think, to be honest. But... This just allows us to get in to do a little bit more cleaning. 
This doesn't have a back tension belt on the side there. So I'm, I'm maybe thinking of the later model or the earlier model. Gives us access to this leaf spring. We're going to clean that. But it's always good to remove that and get a good look at what we're actually dealing with. So I think the first thing we'll do is give this all the, the capstan bushing and everything and where the capstan goes a good scoosh out. And then we will have a look at any places that need a re-grease, such as the head raft. There is some grease on there and it feels very smooth. So I'm not going to completely strip down the entire transport, but we will touch a little bit of grease here and there. And then this bar on the side here is a soft close mechanism, which is a bit too soft, if I'm honest with you. Probably needs all the grease scooshing out and replacing just to give us a bit more oomph. The grease is not jellified that's in it, it's, it still feels like absolutely fine. So yeah, let's do a bit of cleaning now. I won't bore you with the cleaning, but I'm going to get cotton buds and IPA all into the where the capstan goes. Anywhere that is rotational, anywhere the capstan goes in amongst this bit, I can possibly get my oiling needle into the back of the real motor there to try and get some on the, on the axle. If I can get it through the top here, I can get it down through there. And I don't think this needs much else, if I'm honest with you. So. Right then, I think we are mostly about as clean as we're going to get. It was already pretty clean anyway, I'll be perfectly honest with you, so it didn't really take that much effort. So now we're getting on to the rebuild, and I'd also like to clean... I've lost, lost my little tool there. I'd also like to clean the leaf switches as well, and I'll show you how I would do that. So the leaf switches themselves are these bad boys here. So you'll notice it's basically two bits of brass. Let's see if we can zoom in there. It's two bits of brass and they make contact like that. So it's very important that they're cleaned up. So what I like to use is some very, very fine wet and dry. And I cut it into some little strips here. And then I just insert it between the two parts. And then just a little bit of a clean on that side. And the same on the other, if we can get it in between. That's all it takes. And then there is a sum on the back. And there is one. Uh, there is one up here, which is actually closed, as you can tell. I think that one actually might be the tape insertion switch off the top of my head. I cannot remember. As I say, these are very, very clean anyway. But they must be cleaned as part of a service because if you don't do it, you'll be taking the transport back out again. So it's very, very light and very gentle. And I always use decent quality emery paper as well so it doesn't end up leaving loads of rubbish inside your transport. And then, somehow, we have to do the same with those three in there. You can just see those three, which is why. I cut my emery paper into very small strips. So if I can somehow wiggle some of these wires out of the way. And then while the capstan's out with these transports, I like to go lengthways like so. And sometimes put a little bit of downwards pressure on using, I like to use a ceramic screwdriver, but just a little tiny bit, that's all you need. Right then, so they're done. So what we're going to do next, let's get this belt and capstan and everything back in. We'll close the transport up and position it 
this way and then we're going to move all these things out of the way our nice clean capstan can go back in so what we've got then we've got our capstan we've got our retaining washer we have this brass washer and then the final thing to go on is this mild steel washer and here's how I do it where's my oil at I get our cassette deck oil at and I put a dab and then our brass part and then tiniest dab and then our mild steel washer if I can get hold of the bloody thing mild steel washer on the top that's us on there and then a dab just a dab and then a dab on the capstan shaft itself by start start there so you don't want it on this top bit so when you insert it down now you'll never get oil on this end which is what's going to touch your tape and then simply insert without catching anything okay and then Nakamichi recommends grease on this ball bit and I use Mollicourt DX so a little bit of grease not too much too much is too much like so and then we put when we put our mortar and everything back on now there's a plastic plate there which goes on top and that is where your grease is going to settle so herein lies the challenge now of fitting this belt so make sure your hands are nice and clean you've got no nothing on your hands from that grease there's our belt now look at that one how that one sits it's been sat with the, the mortar there so it's bent look look at this nice fresh one beautiful what I like to do is belt on the capstan belt on the mortar and then twist that plate underneath everything like that it seems complex but in practice it's not too bad it's these wires that are the pin so the beauty of these capstans is they're so big that you can afford a little bit of wiggle and right then so it needs to be underneath the belts and onto the mortar I'm going to develop a tool for this I'm going to be a millionaire and we can thread that underneath like so and then we can put it around our mortar underneath yes my hands are in the way but that's it Ta -da! And let that spin and centralize and then it screws back in for that which is your small brass screws this plate sits in little feet as well which is quite handy because when when you've got that white wire in the wrong place you can pull it back out again <laughs> right let's check all your wires are free yes 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 perfect Do, do, do. And when you flip it over now, that capstan will stay in place, and you can use your retaining washer there. And what I do is the tiniest dab of oil inside your capstan bush, and then our retaining washer tweezers, and then just press it home like so quite firm sometimes but that's good and then put your finger on the back put some pressure on the capstan itself and just make sure that that's not flapping about all over the place but well, that's us in that's us good I think I'm gonna get the oiler in and try and get it just into that real mortar if I can capture that on camera because I'm not sure you can see I'm gonna go down that hole 
right down in there, like so, like that. Because them rail motors can be a pain in the back, if I'm honest. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. Most of the time, they've been fine, to be honest. Right then, so we've got our light board returning plate. And this is a great time to give this a little bit of a dust. I find that your trousers are the best place for that. And this sits on these little lugs here and here. I think we're going to pull this and strip and clean it, which involves this horrendous kind of clip, this plastic clip here. Once it's out, scoosh it out. Get all the grease out, repack it, and put it back together. <laughs> there we go. Let's see the gory details of that. Mm, just all grease, basically. I'm going to keep that zoomed in. Let's see what colour this is when it comes out. <laughs> None. <laughs> it's completely dry. And then we'll pack this again with grease. See that in satisfying close up. Not around the piston with the oil seal. There we go. Let's read, do our cable ties. Beautiful. I think that we are squared. There's one last thing that I didn't do. Oh, do you know what? I don't know if I did do it. I think I did it, but it's just a little dab of mortar oil in the mortar bushing. Don't forget to oil your motors. I always say that. And I'm going to leave that that way around for a couple of seconds to let that fall in to the bushing. But we're ready to refit. I'm going to let you in a little secret here. Sometimes I struggle to get these Nakamichi transports back in. So you can witness my pain here if this doesn't go to plan. Here we go. Oh, that was suspiciously easy. So, for your transport, screws are the ones with these lock washers on them. Just in case you got to the stage where you forgot what screws is what. But the top one, it only has one, and it goes into plastic. I think that's why we have lock washers, if I'm honest with you. But now that's there, we can just uh, commence replugging everything in. So, long white one over here. The, uh, the shorter white one is here. And then over this end, you've got your black and blue one, which is your light on the front, which goes in just below that one. My big fingers can get it in and then thread the head one and its counterpart the erase head power underneath this loom and that one goes there it says erase next to it which is pretty straightforward and then your head is the one that's furthest away which goes over there beautiful so now two screws underneath and we'll give it a test so here we are then, turned on. Let's find our test tape. We had what, Chas and Dave. Obviously we shouldn't see much difference, but it's more to test function rather than anything else. That slow close is beautiful. It goes forward a little bit when you press, uh, when you insert the tape there. There we 
go, playing. Good speed on the fast forward. Good speed on the rewind. Play. Pause works. All right, that's it. On to electronics, quick calibration and out the door. So here we are in our spectrum analyzer and I've put my test tape in which is 6.3 kilohertz and weirdly this is mega fast. We're at 8K. So whether somebody's been in here and played with this motor, I'm not entirely sure. So if you see that line on the bottom right hand corner above it says 8062, I'm going to turn down the pot on the back of the motor until I get 6300. As you can see that's going down and down and down. And this analyzer flicks between 6281 and 6375 when it's in the right place. Just like that. So that is us at the correct speed. And really good actually. No massive wobble. Happy days. Speed done. Alright, so I went to do our azimuth head alignment as we usually would with our azimuth test tape. And lo and behold, that's us in sync. From the start, no adjustments necessary. This is a really, really good condition looked after deck. There's a little bit of wobble there, but honestly, my tape has had some use and I could probably do with the new tape, but when the tape's settling, we're good. So I'm not gonna go any further with the adjustments for that. The speed's now fine. The azimuth is good. Everything's playing as it should be. Now it's just a case of buttoning it up and taking it for a spin. So there we have it then guys. This one turned out to be a bit of a strange one really because I, I didn't even think to check that tape at the start that was in it when it shipped. I thought, you know, I've great, I've got a tape. Uh, I did not think to even go anywhere near it. Uh, so whether that was picked up by somebody and then they tested it, I'm not entirely sure. I think the last thing I've got to do now is just give all this a good clean over, getting all those gaps and get all that dust out. Look at that little bit of dust on the front plate there. Uh, and I think that's basically all that's left to do on this. And then after that, it's just a case of enjoying it. Do some recordings, have a bit of a play with it and see what happens from there. I think this is going to uh, somebody else. I'm not entirely convinced I'm going to keep this one. I already have one on the floor there and I have one in the rack. So I think you can only have too many Nakamichis before you end up with too many Nakamichis. But yeah, I'm going to get to some cleaning. Go and enjoy your day. And on to the next one. The next one is a very special video with a good theme to it as well. So I'm building up to that a little bit. But yeah, that's this one done. A nice, a nice result with this one. And I'll see you on the next one. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe. Um, my subscription amount is slowly going up. It's nice. The more subscriptions I have, the more people get to see my video. It helps the YouTube algorithm, blah, blah, blah. So, peace.